I play 12 hours of Dragon Ball Project Multi, so you don't have to. Well, 13 and a half, but 12 just sounded better in the title. Anyway, here is a quick review of the game. Is it any good? First things first, the gameplay. How do you play? How do you win? What can I compare it to? I would say it's a mix of League of Legends and Pokemon Unite, with its own little twist. Like most MOBAs, you take out the towers, which are god destructions in this case, and you take those out to get closer to the core, which is called a dragon shell. Now, once you destroy the dragon shell, a dragon ball comes out. And once you pick up that dragon ball, you win the game. So it sounds very simple in concept. And I'd say, yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. But this is a MOBA. So there's a lot more than that. There's nuance. And like most MOBAs, there's two lanes. There's a bottom and there's a top. <clears throat> the middle is pretty barren until later in the game. Before we get into craziness, let's talk about the god destructions first. The towers. Oh. So essentially, it's a checkpoint for the enemy team, or your team, it's a checkpoint throughout the game. If you beat it, you can move on to the next one, which is closer to the main objective, the Dragon Shell. You gotta take out those towers to move on and move on and move on. And if it's your own god destruction, and let's say you're getting cornered, you're getting absolutely wrecked, your health is low. You go into the area of effect of your own god of destruction, and the attendant, or the angel, of the god of destruction, will heal you, as long as you're within the area of effect, of course. And if an enemy gets into the area of your God of Destruction, it'll shoot at that enemy, dealing a ton of damage. You might be wondering, how do you take them out? Well, you can't attack the God of Destruction until Zeno shows up to attack it, kind of, because you can take it out without Zeno, but you risk on taking a ton of damage in the process. I only recommend trying to attack it without Zeno there if the God of Destruction is at very low health to minimize damage to yourself. Because Zeno allows you to go inside the area of effect without the God of Destruction attacking you. And while Zeno is there, the attendant, the angel, will no longer heal your enemies or you. So be careful because everybody is more vulnerable when Zeno is at their tower, at their God of Destruction. So keep that in mind. So you have a certain amount of time to deal damage with Zeno there. If there's a countdown timer, it's going down. You only have a certain amount of time to do as much damage as you can. You can destroy it. Awesome. And let's say you didn't kill him. You didn't get the God of Destruction taken out. You are automatically pushed out of the area. So you can stay there even when the timer hits zero. Unlike most MOBAs, it'll actually just push you out of the area. You're not going to take damage after the timer runs out. You're not going to go, oh no, and you get absolutely destroyed. Game is a little casual that way, which is pretty nice. But the thing is, Zeno shows up on both team sides, which gets a little hectic. You know, Zeno's on the top, Zeno's on the bottom. It's kind of cool too because, you know, there are two Zenos if you know Dragon Ball lore. So it kind of kind of made sense, you know? But the game could get pretty wacky, especially since we get cameos from Nappa, Android 16, Ribrian, Jacko. But the biggest one of them all is Kid Goku as a great ape. So these characters show up on the field as bosses and eliminating them by dealing the final hit. So yes, an enemy can steal it if they deal the final hit. It causes an effect to occur, such as damage to the enemy's God of Destruction or a debuff on the God of Destruction, allowing you to do more damage. Great Ape Goku is essentially, am I gonna win the game or am I gonna lose the game? In most cases, if you do not get Great Ape Goku, you lose the game. But if you're playing really well, you have like really high level characters on your side, you could still win, you could still sneak it out. But getting Great Ape Goku is very beneficial. You get a ton more health, and Zenos show up on both ends, top and bottom, of your side. And you get about a minute to destroy the Gods of Destruction. It is so helpful. It is so helpful. Like I said, unless you take out the enemy team if they get it super fast, you defend it super well, and you just play like an absolute god, you're gonna lose that game, buddy. But yeah, with Great Up Goku, if it gets defeated, it's not like Pokemon Unite with Zapdos and you just basically insta-lost. It is safeable. But uh, yeah, remember, it's mobile at heart, so you get all stuff, all that crazy stuff. And like I said, it gets pretty wacky with these cameos because it's like, do I defend that cameo? Do I defend my God of Destruction? Like, you gotta really have good positioning, good game sense. If you see somebody needs help, you go to them. I could go on and on and on. I don't wanna talk too hard into the gameplay because I'm just here to review the game and tell you how I feel about it. And again, it's a mobile at heart, but don't forget it's also a Dragon Ball game. So you can play as the Dragon Ball heroes <clears throat> or villains. And well, as you play the game, you get more powerful, the character levels up, and it allows you to get abilities to, well, make them stronger. You get three regular abilities and an ultimate, and you get XP by eliminating NPCs on the map or enemy players. NPCs such as the bosses I mentioned before, or just the random guys throughout. 
So each character plays differently and has different role to fill. So we got damage, which, well, damages in the limbs, people. We got a tank, which is supposed to soak up damage, distract the enemy, live, don't die, you just don't want to die. And protect anybody who you can. The technical character, which is a mix of healers like Boo, who has a healing beam, and people who can debuff the enemy and such, like Krillin, who has solar flare. And something that's pretty neat is, as a sane character or cooler, you can transform at level 7. Hopefully we get more of these. Something that's also very important to know is not only do you have these, you know, abilities, each character has universal moves such as a dash, which essentially is like a flash from League, but you can use it a lot more frequently. And the recall function, which in a lot of MOBAs is really important because if you're at low health and you can't get to the God of Destruction, or you're just like so low to the point where you don't even want to risk like standing there and getting slow heals, you get your health immediately, but you also go back all the way back to the spawn. So it's helpful for that. And again, it also could be used, let's say, your shell's broken and you want to protect it. Immediately recall all the way back and gold and gold and gold. And something that's pretty unique to Dragon Ball Multi is you have assist, you have partner characters, and it's assigned based on which role you have. For instance, as tank, I have Kaba, which gives me damage reduction, so I'm safe. And as a technical, I could have somebody like Goten, who's a turret, or from her with a shotgun, who's also a turret. And as an attack character, you could have somebody like Otamo, who pushes the enemies away from you or King Furry who allows you to do which allows you to do more damage if you're within the area of effect these things are really cool and I gotta say you gotta remember to use them and use them wisely I won't get into too many specifics as this is supposed to be a quick review but if you want to get more in depth and have a guide you let me know down below in the comments I would gladly do one and I played every character and you know what? Some were definitely better than others. Some were good for me. Some were probably better for other players. But I will say this. Zamasu and Krillin, absolutely my favorite. Super good in my opinion if you know how to use them properly. Second thing second, I do want to talk about the UI though. It's because the UI is pretty simple to follow. Looks neat. Goku even goes Super Saiyan when you start the queue, which is pretty cool. But believe me, I had a good look at that queue. Because day one, they had to put the game into emergency maintenance. I was waiting. I was waiting from 1 a.m. to like 3 a.m. It's funny too, because Twitter kept saying, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, it'll be fixed. Mm -mm. It, it didn't work till the next day. And let me tell you that orange countdown in the queue <laughs> menu. Oh, how I wished it was a seven Dragon Balls, just so I was able to play at that point. This is the funnest game I ever played. The one game. <laughs> you, you pop simulator, is that what we're playing now? <laughs> oh, Dragon Ball <laughs> There's time in a row, let me in queue. That's telling me something. Come on. Right? Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. Are y'all on the party together? No. <laughs> no. Uh. We're just all in right now. But that's neither here or there now. I got to play the day after. Like I said, I played like 13 hours. And I gotta say, it was a lot of fun solo and with a squad. Definitely more fun with a squad with some homies. I'll just say this. The UI gets minus points because you basically have to spam invites to get into the game with your buddies because that's like pretty broken still. And you have to like close and reopen the game to actually get these invites. And I just want to say, hopefully they get these kinks figured out by the full release of the game. Right now it's a bit iffy. But when you get into a game, it's, it's fun, you know? Like that's... Again, that's why I played all day. So third things, third, my hopes and worries about the game. I hope there's more modes, but based on this Battle Pass quest, it seems like they got that kind of figured out. More maps I hope for as well, which is probably going to be within the new mode, but who really knows. I just love the current map though right now. I don't want to be too hateful because there's just a tons of references on the map itself. Of course, there's the Cell Juniors by the Cell's Time Machine, and there's the Larvae Shell like right there. So that's pretty cool that they have stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, a little nod. Like if you know, you know. So if we get more maps, I hope to get more references like like that because I'll be really happy if we get more references and of course I'd like more characters to play as. Now I'd hate to end this video with a little doom and some gloom but I might have to. And I played with my squad, I played with some friends but when I did end up doing solos something weird happened. It kind of seemed like it was only me and one other real player and the rest of the teams, both enemy and my team, were just bots. And I only say that because I looked at the stats page and you could just see like a huge discrepancy on essentially just all the stats 13 look two four zero like what so did it just so is it just like is it just put like one person against all bots just looking at these stats though it's just like what two so i'm 13 and oh they're 10 and four yeah like look like a lot of the damage numbers and stuff i feel like this really kind of just tells like it's really weird so i hope 
game doesn't end up doing this fully because I just want a team full of actual like people. I want real people. I don't want bots. Hopefully this isn't a full game issue because it just kind of makes the game dumb easy half the time. Like it's super easy to rank up. Monetization of the game. That's kind of like the big thing where I'm like, mm. because for instance, each character has a rank next to them and it's in purple and you need to spend enough coins to be able to rank up the, the, the item. <laughs> so you could have the ability to unlock it. You have the, uh, you need to spend enough money or I guess in-game money, just to be clear, to have the chance to buy them. So that's like, because let's say, I don't know, they have a, like a level three or something and they're really meta in the full game. Sounds like somebody could just spend a bunch of cash to get them and that's a little bit iffy. There's also a card system in the game and well, like a lot of things that could also be monetizable. Currently, there's a gacha system for capsules and as of now, as of now, it seems to be for cosmetic unlocks, which is cool. But that could easily be monetized, like they could put cards in there or something, which is a bit worrying. You can get coins from the premium capsules, which is pretty nice, but <sighs> there's also a battle pass. There's going to be a free and premium tier. So unless you can get enough things with the free tiers, the game may be dead sooner than later. But uh, as for the beta as it is right now, because remember, it is a beta. It is really fun. And I guess we're just kind of have to wait and see to the full release to see if it's Doom or if it's Bloom. You know what I'm saying? I have to say this though. It's really fun if you're a fan of MOBAs, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball, if you're a fan of anime, go ahead and check that out, please.